Oshale and welcome to Oshi Reads and in today's video I'm very excited to bring you my favorite books my favorite books of 2017 I have 12 books in all to share with you so let's go ahead and get started so I will be sharing all these books with you in order starting with my least favorite and working my way all the way up to my most favorite but first I want to start with an honorable mention and this is a novella that I read on Christmas Eve called The Night Before by Jacintha Howard. And it is basically about two people who reconnect the night before Christmas. They meet at a Christmas party, but they grew up together in the same small town and attended the same high school, but they didn't really know each other. And they kind of meet at this Christmas party because they're both home for Christmas to celebrate with their families. One thing leads to another and they end up spending Christmas together. And it's just about how these two people who kind of meet in this serendipitous way seem to have nothing in common on the surface, but as they connect and form a bond, they kind of find a love connection. And it's a very cute, beautiful holiday story that I truly enjoyed. And it really took me by surprise and I gave it five stars. So it's not a full length novel, so I just wanted to make it an honorable mention. So let us begin with number 12, and that is When Dimple Met Rishi by Zandhaya Menon, and I gave this one five stars. I read it over the summer, and it completely blew me away by how much I enjoyed it. It was certainly different from anything I've ever read before. Indian male and female protagonists, and the Indian culture, and their families, and it features a girl in tech, and it just blew my mind. It completely blew my mind. It was spectacular. It completely blew my expectations and was a delightful read. And I really love to see more books like this on the market, please. Dimple was such a delightful female protagonist and it was so cool to see kind of things switched around. She was the more practical of the two. She was just focused on her career and her passions and she just wants to do big things in tech and she wants to go to this camp so badly and her parents and her kind of come to an agreement for her to go but there's an ulterior motive and she doesn't know that. And it's so interesting to see how feminist she is and how her and her mother clash because her mother is very very traditional and very old school and you know they are Indian and there are certain expectations and they just are so so invested in her finding a husband and she is not about it and then we have Rishi who is our male protagonist and he is very traditional so he is kind of the model son and his parents have put all of their hope and pride in him and he wants to basically make all of their dreams come true by finding a wife and settling down and having this traditional Indian marriage and this traditional Indian life and continuing their traditions and he's been to India so his family culture is very important to him and his family history is very important to him and so it's so interesting to see these two meet and clash and get to know each other at this tech camp and and it's interesting to see the parents' machinations kind of unravel and how it affects Dimple and Rishi and how they recover from it and also all the things going on at the tech camp and how, how interesting it is. So I loved it. Coming in at number 11 is Always and Forever Lara Jean, which is uh, the long-awaited third and final book in the To All the Boys I Love Before trilogy now. It was supposed to be a duology, but we clamored for a third book so badly that Jenny Han blessed us with this book, and I really enjoyed it. I remember I gave it five stars. This is one of my favorite YA series. Lara Jean is just the sweetest, most relatable, kindest female protagonist. She's so interesting. Her voice is so strong, unique, and pure. I think she's just such a pure soul that I love reading her perspective and I love reading from her point of view. I love how much she loves her family. I love how much she honors her values and you know I love how nonconformist she is and how she is exactly her age. She's not trying to grow up too fast but she's not immature either. So I really enjoyed this third and final book. It was everything I wanted and ugh, I just loved it so much. I was a little disappointed at first when I read it because I was expecting it to be a little bit more exciting, I guess, but 
now that I look back on it and after I let it settle, after I read it, I'm so glad that it went down the road that it did. Basically, we follow Lara Jean on her journey applying to colleges and trying to get into college and we kind of see how that affects her relationship with Peter and how they discuss going to the same school, going to different schools and her going to this one college and visiting and just all the changes that she goes through and she grows up and it's just so lovely to watch. Number 10 is Anti Up by Christina C. Jones, and this book took me by complete surprise. I think this was the first Christina C. Jones book I read, and this was just when I was first discovering her. She's one of my new favorite authors of 2017. She writes African American fiction, and she does it brilliantly. And in this story, we have a male and female protagonist who are unlike any I've ever read. And the female protagonist has a very dark past and she kind of did something in her past that makes you raise your eyebrows a little bit. And the way that Christina C. Jones writes it, you don't know if you should be alarmed that the female protagonist did this or if you are kind of like rooting for her or okay with what she did. It's, it's very interesting. But basically this story is all about poker and people who make their living playing poker and the people who go all the way in Vegas in those poker tournaments and all the things that are at stake and how high stakes it is and how people can make a whole career out of being an amazing poker player. This book was so fascinating and I just got a different insight into that whole world and I got completely wrapped up in it and I loved it. Number nine is Beard in Mind by Penny Reed, and this is the latest in the Winston Brothers series, which is a series that I completely fell in love with last year reading via audiobook, and now I am obsessed. And it is basically like a ragtag romantic comedy type of series following the Winston Brothers. They are such an interesting group of backwoodsmen. They grew up and live in Tennessee, and they are all these men who live in the same home with their mama, and it's just so fascinating. They have a sister who is like their complete opposite, but I just love the way these boys stick together. And as we get into each book, a little bit more about the brothers, unfolds and each book follows a different brother and this book follows one of the twins Bo Winston. Now Bo is kind of like the nicest brother. He's the most charming. He's handsome. He's so accommodating. Everyone loves him and he can win over anyone with his charm. He's kind of everyone's favorite Winston brother and he runs this mechanic shop with his twin and one of his other brothers Cletus and in comes a new mechanic that Cletus has hired that Bo instantly starts to butt heads with, which is so weird because he is so nice and he is so accommodating and everyone likes him and he's used to everyone liking him. But this new mechanic hates him and it is a woman. And her name is Shelly Sullivan and Shelly Sullivan is a unique character. She definitely takes some getting used to and you definitely have to figure out what her background is to figure out why she acts the way she does. But she's very surly, very unlikable, and they just do not get along. But the thing is, she's like the most beautiful woman ever. Like all these men are staring at her and then she opens her mouth and she insults them. She insults everyone actually. So as we follow along, Bo and Shelly, their relationship does develop and they become friends and then of course sparks start to fly and they start to understand each other and they find commonalities and common ground and Bo kind of discovers about Shelly's past and why she is the way she is. And it's so interesting, the mental health history for Shelley, and I really appreciated Penny Reed including that in a female protagonist and showing that you can be desirable and lovable, you know, no matter what you're going through, whatever, whatever mental health struggles you're dealing with, that doesn't make you unlovable or unwanted. And I just loved seeing Bo kind of unravel and us finding out like what's behind the charm and the charming smile. So it was a great story. I loved it. Number eight is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, And this Morgan Matson novel was phenomenal. I read it over the summer and I guess I just wasn't expecting much out of it, but I really enjoyed it. In this book, we follow Andy, who is a politician's daughter and her and her dad don't get along. There's been a rift in the family since her mother passed away and he's kind of holding on to this facade of the perfect family while not really even parenting or paying attention to Andy. So she's kind of used to doing things on her own and she's kind of made a family out of her friends. And she has a summer where she basically, long story short, ends up as a dog walker, which was completely not in her plans. Andy is the type of girl who plans out everything. I mean, she is a type A to the T. And one thing leads to another and her 
plans fall through and she ends up as a dog walker for the summer and it ends up being the best thing to ever happen to Andy. It leads to her having so many new adventures. She develops so much as a person. She learns so much about herself. I love dogs and she ends up loving them too and she meets a boy of course and things unfold rather beautifully and the boy is a surprise, let me say that, and what he does for a living and his background and his family dynamics are so fascinating and the way he and Andy end up relating to each other and really forming a bond is so beautiful to watch and Andy really coming out of her shell and developing new parts of her personality and really embracing the unknown and embracing the messiness that is life and how her and her dad come back together and reconcile. I mean, it's just a beautiful story. It reminds me why I love Morgan Matson so much. Number seven is three. 3 a.m. by Jai Brene, who is another one of my new favorite authors of 2017 who writes African-American, I want to say street romance because it's kind of about thug love and like the streets and what goes on in the hood, which I love because it is so opposite from my life and I find it fascinating. But this book is in volumes one and two and it is such an epic saga. So 3 a.m. is kind of painted as the hour of the artists, right? And the lovers. When artists are awake and they're working and they're painting or they're writing or they're working on their art or when lovers are awake doing what lovers do. This epic saga of the streets, we follow Symphony, Stuart, Kumar, and Kenyatta is kind of your typical thug. Like he runs the streets, everyone is afraid of him. He does very nefarious and underhanded illegal things. And he kind of runs, you know, he runs his city and nothing kind of on the dark side, on, on the underground side, goes through without going through him. Feared and revered, and he's kind of a love him and leave him type as well. He doesn't have any use for women whatsoever. He's very misogynistic, actually. And he runs with a crew that, you know, holds all the same beliefs. They kind of use women and discard them. And then you have Symphony, who's actually a very sweet girl, who has surrounded herself with snakes, and she kind of finds that out as the novel progresses. And even though she grew up in the hood, she still had a pretty pretty good upbringing, um, meaning that she's well educated and she wants things for herself and she has goals and she is not, you know, really a product of her environment. So it's interesting the people that she chooses to surround herself with and as the novel progresses, these two meet and sparks fly and not so good things come out of their relationship and it's kind of sad to watch Symphony unravel and all of the drama that she goes through because not only of her friends but because of this relationship and it's just I can't explain why I'm so obsessed but it was literally like an addiction <laughs> this, this story I could not put it down it completely riveted me I was reading so fast I stayed up all night just to read both volumes and I cannot recommend it enough. I gave it five stars. It completely enraptured me and I cannot wait for the conclusion of this story. Six is Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and boy did I cry my eyes out reading this book. This book touched me in such deep ways. It was so honest. The way that it looked at death and the family dynamics that are altered after death and this was a young adult book and it followed this family and they're pretty tight-knit for the most part. They were tight-knit at one time because they used to spend every summer in this particular um, resort town in this cabin by the lake but over the years as they've gotten older they've all kind of drifted apart in the family and everyone has really busy schedules and they just don't get together as much as they used to and they don't vacation like they used to in the summer everyone kind of scatters and goes their own way and our main protagonist is Taylor and she is the closest to her dad he is the one who understands her in the family he gets her humor they always feel like they can talk to one another they have an open line of communication they are the most alike and her dad just gets her like no one else in the family does and so once they get the devastating news that their dad has been diagnosed with a very aggressive form Taylor's world comes crashing down around her and her parents decide that they're going to spend one last summer at this cabin in the Pocono Mountains that they used to go to and it's kind of the second chance that they have to really reconnect oh my god I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about it oh, can't books they get to you it's this last chance 
that they have as a family to reconnect and It's so heartbreak heartbreaking to read and it was a very difficult novel to get through. I'm very, very glad that I read it because it really touched me in such a profound way. So heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time to watch Taylor's dad sort of try to reconcile his entire life into this one summer and how he tried to impart important parts of himself. I can't. To his children and sort of give them something of him to take with them into the future that he would not be a part of. So it was a beautiful story. I highly recommend it and I want to move on. <laughs> Five is Thicker Than Water by Dylan Allen and this read was profound indeed. I went into it not expecting it to be what it was and I was surprisingly and wonderfully blown away. In this book, Lucia Vega and Reese Carras, and they couldn't be more different if they tried, but Lucia has just come into profound blessing in her life, where the novel that she wrote and self-published has now been chosen by Reese to be made into a film. Reese is this big Hollywood type, and he sees something in this book that he wants to bring to life. Now, the revelations that come out of the making of this film are truly mind-blowing, and Lucia is such a strong character, and as we delve deeper into her history and into her background, we find out that she is undocumented and she came into this country illegally. And we find out the devastating repercussions that has had on her family as a whole, and how she has to hide in a country where she is basically considered illegal, and she does not have the same rights as everyone else. She's had to kind of make up an identity and live very low profile and not go after her dreams because she is afraid of being found out and deported and her only family left in the states is her mother and she's kind of sacrificed everything for her mother but at the same time her and her mother could not be more estranged and further apart because of circumstances that have happened to her family and a gigantic loss that completely ripped her family down the middle. Now this is a romance and we do see how Reese and Lucia fall in love and all the beautiful wonderful things that come from it but we also see the reality of what it means to be undocumented and the fear that these people live under and how it is so hard for them especially as the dream act was repealed to just have a normal life and to have hope for the future because due to circumstances outside of their control as many of these people were brought into the country very very young by their parents they you know are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and we are not allowing them the opportunity to become full citizens of this country even though they contribute so much and they may as well be citizens at I really enjoyed and appreciated and was grateful to this novel for opening my eyes and bringing awareness to this issue and really showing me something that has been just so to read about but has made me so passionate about the topic. I not recommend this read enough. is When Life Happened by Jewel E. Ann. Completely shocked me and took me by surprise by how much I got out of it and how much I loved it. I went into it with no expectations really. The synopsis was fairly vague, but the turn this book took, wow, probably one of the biggest twists of my reading experience of 2017. Male protagonist Parker Cruz, who despises cheaters heart and soul. It's because she was cheated on. Her boyfriend slept with her twin sister and she's never gotten over it. Women are severely estranged and it has something to do with a wedding prank gone wrong involving a laxative. Yeah, I think you can connect cuts here. You know, years go by and Parker finally decides that it's time to grow up. Time to move out of her parents' house, get another job, you know, act her age, 26. Amazing job opportunity and what do you know, her next neighbor Gus is starting to look mighty fun. Electrician, you know, he works with his hands. This is Iowa, so he's a good old Iowa farm boy. And next thing you know, these two are, let's just say they're getting connected. Problem though, Gus is married. Oh yeah, hypocrisy much? That's all I'm gonna say because the things that happen, <laughs> the twist in this book, you cannot see coming and I do not wanna ruin it for you guys. But I highly recommend it. It was amazing. It took me on an emotional roller coaster that I still haven't recovered from. Go read it.
Coming in at number three is another amazing book by one of my new favorite authors. Yes, another one I discovered in 2017, Love Belvin, who, yes, writes African American fiction slash romance. And this book is called Love in the Rhythm of Blues. I talked about it in my December wrap up, so I'm not going to ramble on too much more about it, but I loved it. I cannot wait for the next one to come out. It left on a cliffhanger, and I am just itching, 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 itching. I will insert my um, 2017 December wrap-up. I almost couldn't remember. I will insert my December wrap-up in the down bar if you want to go check out what I said about this novel. I, this video has gone entirely too long, so I just want to move on, but this book is excellent, and so are all of Love Belvin's books. I highly recommend it. My number two is another book I talked about in my December wrap-up, so I'm definitely not going to ramble on too much more about it, but this is a Colleen Hoover one, and it's called It Ends With Us. This book profoundly affected me on a deep, 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 deep emotional level. I cannot even, I, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I recommend this book to everybody. And this was another book that took a twist and a turn I did not see coming. It was so good, you guys. It, it was so good. I remember when the last page was flipped. I just had to sit there for a moment and collect my thoughts because I was so blown away. Oh, oh my god, please go read this book. It's so good. And my number one book of 2017. Yeah, awesome. I am so dang excited to share this book with you. And this is, drum roll please. That was a horrible drum roll. Grip by Kennedy Ryan. Oh, I have alluded to this in past videos, but this book was epic. It was everything that I'm looking for in a book and the funny thing is I read it really early on in 2017 and the moment I finished reading it I knew. I was like this is gonna be my favorite book this year. No, no book can top this one and I was right because here it is at the end. Well we're in 2018 now but it reigns supreme at the number one spot and I also include the sequel still with that as well. But I highly recommend this. In Grip we follow Marlon James also known as Grip and he is this young black man who has so much talent, so much fire, and so much passion. But because of where he's from, the hood, and where he's growing up, and the fact that he is from a single parent home and raised by his mother and he doesn't know who his father is, all of these facts kind of lead into the statistics that he's not going to do much with his life and he's not going to make much of himself. But oh, does he prove all the stats wrong. And it's so amazing to watch Grip as he kind of breaks out of his shell and how his mother literally sacrifices everything to give her son every opportunity. All of the traumas that he lives through and how he still manages to rise and how he has such an incredible talent for poetry and how he turns that into raps and he becomes an MC and he becomes this up and coming rap artist and you are just so blown away because he starts to infuse consciousness into his raps and how he's so passionate about activism and about the lives of black people and black men and how he infused that infuses that into his art and the raps in this book and the poetry blew me away. Kennedy Ryan, who are you? Because you wrote this so flawlessly. This book is perfect from beginning to end. I cannot think about anything in this book that I did not like. Even the romantic relationship was beautifully written and progressed seamlessly and had the right amount of ups and downs and twists and turns to keep me interested, to keep me invested, but not to frustrate me and overwhelm me and make me feel like it was melodramatic and too much. And in this novel we have this conflict because Grip is so pro-black and he is this up-and-coming rap artist and he does have all these expectations put on him, not just for his image, but just for someone of his social status and his wealth and his race and the person he falls in love with is someone the whole world tells him he's not supposed to love. It's this white girl and she comes from a completely different background. She grew up filthy rich with a silver spoon in her mouth but her past is not good either. Just because you grew up rich with lots of money does not mean that you don't have problems and deep traumas and wounds and it is just so beautiful to watch their story unfold and how they over overcome all these obstacles the biggest obstacles being themselves 
to be with one another and I really loved how our female protagonist, her name is Bristol, she's very aware of her whiteness and her privilege and what that means in the society and it's so touching to watch the deep, important and harrowing and kind of uncomfortable conversations these two have how it builds a bond between them instead of tears them apart it actually makes them stronger that they're able to have these honest conversations about race and class with one another and how she's really striving to learn more about racism and about what's going on and she's trying to learn from his perspective and she's so humble and she comes to the whole situation humbly and from a place of willingness to learn and grow and I really appreciated that about her character I thought it was beautiful and I think it's the way more people need to be especially when you enter into an interracial relationship there has to be that level of honesty communication and understanding between the two people from the different races and cultures so that was beautiful to watch and to kind of read unfold between the two of them but oh yes I can't I can't you need to go read this book just 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 go get it please just go get it get it it is so good it is so 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 good you are going to thank me Oh, so that is it. <laughs> to be a little dramatic there because I am done. That is my favorite books of 2017 video. All done. All completed for you guys. All books will be linked down below. I'm contemplating doing a favorite series of 2017 video. Is that something you guys would be interested in watching? Thumbs up this video. If so, I'm going to end now. This has gotten entirely too long. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in my next video. I'm out of breath. Oh my god, I gotta go. Love you guys. Bye! <laughs> Bye, guys.